if you're building a motorcycle, you want it to sound good when you take it for a ride. And I can tell you I've had my fair share of ups and downs in that department. It's either one of two things for me, it's either too restrictive and therefore I've lost power, or it's not restrictive enough and therefore it's too damn loud. And I get the point that, you know, loud pipes save lives, but there's a point where I'm listening to music and just because I crank it on full volume doesn't make it sound any better to me. And it's the same with the, the exhaust system on a motorcycle. I want it to sound good and I want it to sound at a reasonable level of loudness but not ridiculously annoying. So today we're going to work on the CB750's exhaust and make some baffles and see if we can't get it to sound a little bit better. And if this is one of the first videos you've seen of mine, I'm Dan from Cafe Racer Garage giving you the skills and inspiration you need to build a motorcycle that you can be proud of. So that being said, let's get into those baffles. So what I have here is a section of the exhaust tube on the CB750. It's what the muffler slips over the top of. It's two and a half inch, 62 or 63 millimeters. I need to get it down to about 58 or 59 millimeters. And I had a go at doing this a while ago and I pretty much sliced the side out of it. And I was gonna shrink it down and then do it again and do it again. And just till I can kind of get, I guess, maybe quarter sections um, so that it's almost around. It won't be perfect, but it'll be close. But now I have a slip roller, so let's throw this in the slip roller and see if we can actually shrink it that way. I think that'll be a lot better. Might be a little bit too small for it, but let's give it a go and see if we can get it down to about 58 millimeters. So very soon I'll be taking the CB750 engine out, blasting and painting it. But before I can do that, I need to take it out for a few more shakedown rides. But before I can take it out for a shakedown ride, I need to fix the exhaust because it is stupidly loud. So that actually looks like it could work. Let's go and throw this piece inside the tube and see how much we need to cut out of it. A handy little trick that I use all the time is getting a piece of cardboard or a bit of tape, doesn't really matter what it is, and wrap it around the pipe. Make sure that edge lines up perfectly and as soon as it does, you know you've got a nice straight line down the pipe. As long as you've got a bit of cardboard with a straight line, this will work every time. So this is just an off-cut piece that I had lying around from me building the CB750 stainless steel exhaust system. I'll leave that video at the end for you to go and check out if you want to see that. Uh, yeah, whoops. Did I mention you actually need to get the cardboard really tight around the pipe before you make your mark? Make sure you do that, not what I did. Perfect. Quick stop at the belt grinder and she's all fixed. So another couple of ways of doing this would be one, you could find the right size diameter tube that would fit straight inside your exhaust pipe. That would be ultimate. Uh, in a perfect world, but if you don't have that option, then another way of doing it would be getting a strap of steel, just a flat bit of steel, one millimeter thick, and just wrapping that around a piece of pipe. Wouldn't even matter if it's PVC pipe. Just wrap it around, hold it with a pair of vice grips, put a tack on it, cut off the excess, and then finish welding it, and then you have a piece of pipe, the same as what I'm doing. doing here is I'm using the plasma cutter to cut some custom size washers. I wanted to buy some and I couldn't, trust me I tried. All I was trying to do was try and find the inside diameter, the right, and then I could just pretty much grind out the outside diameter but there was just nothing available at my hardware store. So we're down to making our own. So they may not be perfect but as long as I can get a nice weld on the inside and the outside that'll be all I need. As you can see it leaves a little bit of a shoulder, a little bit of fill room for a bit of weld around there. And I can grind that off flush so it can be nice and smooth on the outside to fit inside the pipe. I want to mention a couple of extra ways of cutting this out without the use of a plasma cutter. Your center hole is going to be the hardest. If the hole is going to need to be that big for your exhaust pipe, then to get a drill bit that size is probably going to cost you a fortune and the chances are it's not going to fit in your cordless drill or have the power to turn it. The biggest drill bit in a, usually a drill bit set is about 13 millimeters or half inch, nowhere near that size. Another couple of options you could use is a hole saw. You can get these sort of cheap. That would work. 
Uh, another option is just to get a drill bit, a small drill bit, and drill a bunch. You probably have one of these already if you've done any work on your bike. Drill a series of holes all the way around the outside as close as you possibly can together, and then hopefully you can sort of snap that piece out. You might have to, you know, spend a bit of time on it to try and get that out, and just spend a bit of time with a half round file and clean that center hole up. Or alternatively, drill one hole, and if you have a coping saw like this, these are also really good because you can detach the blade at one end and drill one hole, push the blade through, reconnect it, and then off you go, cutting it out. Uh, maybe have a beer while you're doing it because it's gonna take some time. Don't have too many beers though, because you won't be cutting the hole very well. I also want to give a huge thank you to Jazz from Jack's Garage for his blog post that he did on making baffles. It was really helpful, definitely worth a read. So thank you Jazz, I really appreciate it. I'll leave it in the description below for you to check out. downloaded two DB meter apps on my phone just to see if I can compare the two to see sort of roughly where we're at and what I'll do for the first test is run the bike no mufflers no baffles just to see what sort of reading we're getting Step, mufflers, no baffles. Baffles, no mufflers. This is what it's reading before I start it up. So just with those baffles alone, I've noticed quite a bit of a difference. Uh, you're probably not going to pick up too much in the microphone, um, but I've got earplugs in and just the tone has changed, which is really cool. So let's get these puppies on and see what happens. That is still a little bit too loud for what I like. So what I'm gonna do is take the baffles out, wrap them in fiberglass, put them back in, and see what that sounds like. Okay, so now baffles are in, no mufflers. Some thoughts on this are, we are inside a garage, so it is going to be a lot louder inside here than it would be outside. And the DB reading on those apps, I don't know how accurate it is. I don't know if you can pick it up in the microphone, but the tone difference, the sound is way better with the baffles than it is without. It's not so high pitched barky, if that makes any sense. It's got more of a tone to it, and I really like that. So I'm happy with the baffles. I'm happy with the mufflers on the baffles. I would like it maybe a little bit quieter, but the only really way to tell is to take it for a ride and see what it sounds like. Well, that could have been interesting. I almost forgot to put the uh, muffler clamps on. Tell me I'm not the only person that actually forgets the small stuff when you get excited to do something. Mm -hmm. 
So I absolutely love this helmet by Rurock. I'm gonna have to see what other colors they have because this color is not gonna be suiting this bike once it's painted up. Got a few small issues it's starting to bog down at top end which is probably just a tuning issue and the other thing is uh, the accelerator is sticking it's not like retracting properly so I want to just check that out before I go too far tail light in the seat and no wires how cool is that I love it so excited about that I did a video on that I'll leave that at the end for you to go and check out so this throttle is a Domino brand and when I first fitted them I wasn't really too excited about how they went together um, I think it was just the install and something that I did not quite right. So I feel like the problem could be here. If I keep these cables really straight with absolutely no bend in them whatsoever, it returns with power. Doesn't matter, even the slightest little bend will cause them to return slowly. So what I've done is I've tracked them around the other side of the frame and then behind the headlight and then back up. And as you'll see just here, it retracts perfectly. So that might have been all it was. Uh, I wouldn't mind actually replacing these cables. I think I do have some, so I might do that uh, when the bike gets completely stripped down and powder coated and painted. So in an effort to try and quieten this down even more, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get these tabs that I've cut and bent in, I'm gonna get them to bend all the way down to touch the other side of the pipe. Uh, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap there. You can put your finger, so I'll bend them all the way down. And even if that means I have to drill another hole on the other side of the tab or increase the size of the holes, it is just a guessing game at the end of the day. Actually, on second thoughts, I'm not gonna bend them all the way in. I'm gonna bend them a little bit more than what they are. So I'll do one final test with the baffles with those tabs that are bent all the way in and see what we come up with. two apps this green one here is the one that I don't think it really has any kind of fluctuation much it's just kind of stays the same and the other one is the one that has the circle which I do kind of think has you know a little bit more of an accurate reading through the process of actually taking this bike out for a few spins today I've noticed that there's a bit of a noise in the engine uh, I noticed this a while ago but uh, now I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is and I have a feeling it's the cam chain tensioner uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off uh, a few of the parts to see if I can get to it without taking the engine out. Because if I can do it without taking the engine out, then later down the track, uh, when I do take the engine out, I can just have the parts ready to go and just install them. I'm really happy with how it sounds now. I actually have a good friend of mine who's my neighbor. I went past his house and I said, did you hear me? And he said, yes, and it sounds way better than it did the first time you rode it. So that being said, I want to ride it a little bit more, but I want to sort out this rattling noise. So that's why the engine is a part at the moment. I'm going to continue that process until I fix that. While I'm doing that, go and check out the CB750 stainless exhaust system I did on this bike, as well as the CX500 exhaust system. The whole system I built, I'll leave those two videos right here for you to go and check out.